Welcome to Tuesdays at 2. I'm your host, RJ. In this show, we take a new ingredient every week. It's going to be an ingredient you can find at your local supermarket, and we're going to teach you how to make a wonderful recipe with it. So stick around and check out the recipe. So welcome. Again, this is Tuesdays at 2 at Swiss Diamond. Uh, I am RJ. If you haven't been here before, the crew puts a bunch of ingredients in the bowl every week. I pick one out at the end of the show, and then next week I'll use them. The idea is to maybe introduce you guys to something you were either scared to use or, or never heard of. Um, and everything we have here is something that you can get at your local grocer or at least something really close. So um, we've already kind of started because we had this going a few minutes ago. Um, and like I said, we had technical difficulties. So let me catch you up to where we're at. Um, currently here in my um, casserole dish, I have water going, pasta cooking. It's been in there about four minutes. Uh, oh no, about two minutes, sorry. I want to start it at four. Um, and then here we have simply um, two tablespoons of butter, sorry, olive oil, um, and then a triple mushroom combo. I've got um, cremini, baby bella, button. Um, you can use any mushrooms you want to for this dish. These are what I can get in store. I honestly really like this combo. I like it better than spending um, you know, 12 bucks a pound on some super wild mushroom mix. But if that's your jam, go for it. Uh, really there's not not a difference so we're doing two dishes uh, one of them is a creamy mushroom um, br oh bruschetta that goes on it'll go on the bread everything we're using uses anchovies today uh, again we're not gonna scare anybody anchovies are a fantastic source of salt and umami flavor uh, we're not gonna have straight bites we're not gonna have pieces of fish that you're gonna have to cook or you're gonna have to eat um, same thing with the pasta. We're doing an Italian themed uh, anchovy caper pasta. It's a little spicy. We're gonna have red pepper in it. Uh, very garlicky, uh, very uh, very rich, but no tomato sauce. This is an Italian themed kind of um, Italian thing. Yeah, Italian themed menu with kind of a switch, uh, a couple of twists. I mean, I'm using Cuban bread on purpose. Uh, I like Cuban bread better than um, Italian bread. If you double bake it, you can still get that tough crust. But the inside stays super soft as opposed to the inside of Italian bread. Where around the crust, you'll find it gets hard. I like the super soft better. Um, I think it works better for this dish, especially since we're going to grill them off. I want to have those um, I want to have those grill marks on them without it being tough to bite into, without it tearing your gums out of your mouth. Um, so that's that's what I'm using there. And the other thing is most people, when you think of a creamed, uh, cream dish, whether it's mushrooms or, or whatever, when you're doing a creamy something, you think cream, you think heavy cream, you think butter, you think half and a half. Uh, I'm using marshmallow cheese and I'm using butter. The reason being is I'm going to get a much creamier, thicker, richer um, uh, mouthfeel out of it than I will with cream without having to boil down that cream and kind of um, make it, I don't know, more, I don't want to say burnt flavor, but you can taste the cookness in it. But wait, before we continue, do me a favor. Click that like button, subscribe to us if you haven't already, make sure you've hit the bell so you get our notifications, and comment down below. I know you don't like everything I do, so let me hear it. Now, back to the recipe. Okay, so what we've done here is we've had these mushrooms in here for about five minutes, and you know, you, I don't know if you can see, but they're starting to break down. They're starting to get pretty, uh, I don't know, cooked, yeah? Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull them out because I still need to add onion in there and soften that, and then I'm gonna bring everything back together. So. I'm just gonna take these out and put them in a bowl to hold. They're gonna continue to cook while they're in here. They're nice and hot already. Sorry about our induction cookware. It makes all kinds of noise. Um, and really what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put another bowl over that just to keep the heat in there because we don't want that to stop cooking. I just need to take a break from that and I need to go to these onions. So for these onions, what I'm gonna do, if you saw, I already used two tablespoons of butter um, for the, or sorry, two tablespoons of oil for the uh, mushrooms. I'm gonna use a tablespoon of butter here for the onions. Same thing, we're just gonna put it in there, get the butter nice and soft, uh, get it melted, get it ready to cook up the onions. And then for the onions, all I wanna do, oh! Make sure you get all the wrapper off it. For the onions, what I wanna do is, um, I wanna soften them, make them translucent. We're gonna fold back in the, the, um, the mushrooms and then we'll get the anchovies and everything going. So this pasta, we're just getting it to your, to the, your level of doneness, however you like it. I like mine al dente. I don't like super soft pasta, um, especially because I'm going to be 
making kind of a, or not a kind of, I'm going to be making a um, butter sauce with it, which means I have to put it back in the can or the pan and cook it a little bit more. So you don't want your pasta to be too soft because you're going to end up overcooking it if you do that, um, especially when you bring it back to the pan, put it back on heat and keep it moving. So I'm just keeping an eye on that pasta right now. Uh, again, it's for a recipe in a minute. We don't really need to do much with it now. Uh, so the next step, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this again. I'm using Cuban loaf. By all means, if you like French loaf, if you like Italian loaf, use what you want to here. All of it's going to be fantastic. Um, I'm going to cut these into, I don't know, three quarters of an inch thick pieces. And what we're going to do is we're going to grill them off on some Swiss diamond uh, grill or on a Swiss diamond grill pan here in a minute. You guys, so here's a trick is to cut these on an angle or on a bias as we call it in the, in the chef world, if you will. Um, the idea here is you're going to get bigger pieces this way, uh, which gives you more surface area in which to put whatever it is you're topping, right? So obviously here we're using the, the mushroom bruschetta mix. Um, you know, if you're using a classic bruschetta with tomatoes and, and all that and cheese, uh, by all means, anything if you if you're using it to use for uh like a buffalo dip at a football game or something like that cutting them this way uh you know on the bias or diagonally or however you want to say it is going to give you more surface area per slice um because let's be honest the bread while it is delicious is only a vehicle for the stuff you're putting on it that's the whole reason why we have it here um i would look pretty bad if i was walking around with just handfuls of this mushroom stuff um, but nobody's going to complain if I'm eating it on a piece of bread with my hands. All right. So, um, I'm using, oh guys, I'm using a Swiss diamond bread knife currently. Swiss diamond made, we saw a hole in the market. We saw that we needed a bread knife. This is serrated on both sides, right? So most bread knives you get are serrated on one side. What that ends up doing is it ends up as you're cutting, it turns your knife and whoop, it turns your knife in towards the serration. Um, so you end up with those lopsided bread cuts. I don't know if you've ever tried to uh, like cut white bread or you know sourdough or something that's got a much bigger uh, area, and you're cutting down, you're cutting down, you're cutting down. Next thing you know, you're nice and done that. You have these weird angled pieces. Having it serrated on both sides fixes that issue. I know that we're known for cookware and not necessarily for our cutlery, but we felt the need to make this knife because we didn't see one in the market that we liked. So this extra bread, again, we don't waste food around here. The team's probably going to eat it, or I'm going to eat it later. Um, so we're just gonna put it to the side. If you don't, if you don't have a kid or a group of kids or you know somebody that's just gonna eat bread by itself, take that extra, take the ends, cut them up into small, uh, you know, small square, small cube. Sorry. Um, put them in a basket, leave them out overnight. Then you got breadcrumbs for the next day. Then you can make croutons. You can put them in the oven. Um, a bread pudding, which is fantastic. I always go to bread pudding because, well, I like sweet things. So I'm just doing, I'm just draining off this pasta. Uh, normally you would put it in a uh, strainer or a colander. The one downside to our studio here is we don't have a sink right here. We got to go to the other side of the wall. So this is just easier for me to do it. I'm going to, so I took that off. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take about two tablespoons of this water um, and just pour it in here. Two reasons that. One, I might need it in the future for uh, to thicken the sauce. I mean, to water down the sauce. And the other reason, I'm probably out of frame, but the other reason is to just keep the pasta nice and moist. Otherwise, it will start to really clump together because we're not going to use it for probably another 10 minutes or so. Um, keep it open. Don't put a top on it or it will start to overcook. That shouldn't overcook. We should be fine. Okay, so the next step to this as that's going is I'm going to take this grill pan and I'm going to get it hot. So you can see in here these the onion's starting to brown. Um, it's starting to it's starting to get translucent. It's starting to break down. That's exactly where we want it. Um, the next step is I'm going to add these mushrooms back. And we're going to cook those for probably another I don't know three to five minutes. You're going to want to get them broken down. It, um, you want to break them down kind of as far as they go without them getting gummy. Um, mushrooms if you cook them too long they get really gummy and you definitely don't want that. All right. But we're going to stop all of that in a minute. So this is the perfect point. So as you can see, this stuff's starting to mix together. Our next step is we need to get the anchovies in there. 
because we need to give the anchovies a little bit of time to break down. I think what I said, I think I was saying in the video that we got dropped in, but maybe it was this one. So anchovies are, uh, well, they are a fish, and we are using the fillet of anchovy along with the oils that they come in. Uh, you're not going to have like a piece of fish in there. They're super delicate. The only way, I, I know you've probably seen pictures like on pizza where you have the, the fillet of the fish or whatever. Um, the only way that happens is they lay extremely undisturbed. Um, these things are going to break down and turn into almost a paste pretty quickly. So we're going to put them in, kind of stir them up, and they're going to break down pretty quickly. I am using two fillets um, of anchovy here. I'm just going to split them up, kind of quick hand chop them here, or hand pull them apart. And we're going to let those soak in there. We'll stir them a couple of times. As I said, they will break down. Um, so what anchovies are going to bring to the table here is they're going to bring a really rich umami flavor, and they're also bringing salt. If you notice, I haven't put any salt in this dish. Um, I am going to use Worcestershire sauce here in a minute um, because it's, this dish is going to call for more salt, but we won't need uh, we won't need to use real salt or real salt uh, like flake salt or anything like that in this dish um, probably at all. You may want a little bit on top after you do the. Um, you may want a little bit on top after you finish it off, but you, pro you probably won't need it. The bread's got salt in it. Um, again, the fish is going to add saltiness to it. So my recommendation for uh, anchovies is buy the best one that your store has, so long as it's packed in olive oil. Um, if it's packed in anything funny, uh, you know sometimes you can find them packed in capers, or you can find them uh, packed in pickle brine. Uh, I, I don't. I don't get them. Like they're not great. They're super salty. I think that people try. I think that companies try to entice you uh, to buy them just by giving you a different option other than how they are. But if you get them packed in water, um, they usually lose that richness that the olive oil gives it. Um, and if you get it packed in anything else, as I said, it's usually got some really funky flavor that I don't recommend. All right. So with these, I'm just spreading some butter. I melted some butter earlier, and I'm just putting them on the grill. So this Swiss Diamond Grill Pan is going to, if you haven't seen us use it before, it will act just like a grill. It's going to give us those brown marks, assuming this thing gets hot enough. There we go. Um, it's going to give us the brown marks like you would find on a grill, like grill marks. Um, and it's going to just crisp up the bread a little bit, which is what we're looking for. Again, we don't want this bread to be so tough that when you bite it, the whole thing breaks apart and you get shards in your gums and stuff like that. That's not what this meal is about, right? You, want, you do want the contrast between crunchy and creamy. Um, and the creamy obviously is going to come from the, mu the mushroom mixture, but you don't want the crunchy to be so crunchy that you're kind of breaking your teeth. So as you can see, that's kind of breaking down. We're getting pretty close here. Uh, next up, while those grill, I'm putting in one tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce, three cloves of garlic, which I'm going to break up. Um, Roughly, so you can use uh, pre pre minced garlic here if you guys want to. Um, if you do use about four garlic cloves worth, maybe even five, you've lost a lot of that allicin in there. The allicin is the chemical that really gives off that that creamy garlicky flavor. Um, and if you absolutely have to use powdered garlic, put it in at the very end. Don't put it in now. Um, put it in like you would, like you were going to salt something at the end. And garlic, and put the flavor to where you want to. That flavor is different. Um, and more importantly, what's going to happen is if you put it in now, <clears throat> excuse me, the dryness of it is going to seep into the food. And it's going to make everything a little bit more dry than you want to. Um, it's not salt. It's not bringing out the moisture or anything. But it just it's, it's a totally different texture than we're going for. As well as flavor as well. So three cloves of garlic, roughly chopped, going right in there. You don't really have to like get a porter or a mesto or porch, whatever, those things. You don't need to get one of those and uh, make this into a paste. You kind of want the chunks of garlic in this. So we're going to let that cook for about a minute, minute and a half, um, to really let the flavors of the garlic come out. Check our bread here. Not quite. This thing could be hotter. Okay, so after about a minute or so, what we're going to do is we're going to take marshmallow cheese and take about a tablespoon of it 
Again, give or take. I didn't measure it out. You don't need to either. Um, you just want to get it to a creamy consistency. Um, the marscapone cheese is going to go a long way once you get in there and start to break it up. I know it doesn't go in as liquid, and I know you think you need a lot more than you think you do, um, but you don't necessarily. I'm going to use, I don't know, that much. Two tablespoons and a half. Just put it in and start to let it melt. We're going to throw in um, about another tablespoon of butter, which is all the butter you're going to need. There's already a ton of butter flavor in here, but the butter is going to meld with that um, marscapone and turn into kind of a creamy sauce which is what we're going for. We'll give it a second to kind of start to melt together. So again, right now I've got this on like a medium, medium low even. Um, we're not trying to rush cook anything on this meal. I say that. I would like for those to go faster. All right, I'm going to switch these. Maybe. Perfect. All right. This one gets hotter. So I'm going to get that going really hot. So, all right. So I think that we probably won't use all those so I can show you. This is pretty much done, right? So we're just kind of letting it warm or stay warm. Uh, in fact, probably going to move it to the side so we can get started with our next thing. So we'll come back to that as that bread gets ready. So you saw I cooked the pasta earlier. This is a spicy, um, uh, a spicy pasta dish that again it's using anchovies, it's using garlic, it's using capers, uh, it's using pasta oil, and that's really about it. It's a pretty quick recipe that's going to bring a ton of flavor and possibly new flavors to your kitchen. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, so for this one, we are using. I don't need near that much oil. I'm going to use a tablespoon of oil. And then what we're going to do there is I'm going to take this garlic, same thing as I did last time. We're going to rough chop this. Um, we're going to cook this first, though, so we're going to let that pan get nice and hot with that oil, with that oil in there. So I'm going to actually chop this garlic a little bit rougher than we did last time even. Um, so I'm going to just kind of thin slice it. I'm not going to shave it because um, when you shave it, what happens is it almost dissolves, which is good. But this one, I really want you to be able to get that bite of garlic in um, as, you're, as you're getting a bite of food. So we want that bite of garlic right next to the anchovy that you're going to get. This meal is going to blow your socks off. If you guys like Italian food, but don't want tomatoes all the time. Um, you know, most Italian food doesn't have tomatoes in it. If you go to Italy, this is going to show you another way to cook something that's going to be amazing. It's Italian themed. Um, and it's going to be something you're going to be really proud to make as well. All right. So that's what we're looking for on these. Boom. I'm not going to do both sides. I in fact don't want to do both sides, not because I'm lazy, but because I want that soft, I kept telling you about it before, I want that soft bite. Uh, bite. And so that soft bite is going to be on the bottom. So as you bite into it, it's going to be nice and soft. So we're going to plate these over here, and these can cool down. We're going to do up the next run here while these cook. So again, I just took butter and buttered the side of it that goes down. Um, and that helps get this nice golden brown color. There we go. See how this one's a lot hotter? This is going to cook better. I don't have anything else to cut, correct? Correct. So now we're going to start plating this. Um, oh, I do have some parsley. We'll chop that up. So as the bread starts to finish up here, this is a really easy plate. You can do, you can plate these individually. Um, I usually cook these for more than one or two people. So I would plate it on a, some kind of party platter, uh, a cutting board for this instance. I think cutting board looks great. All right. Come on now. Almost on those. Perfect. So you're going to take these. 
just gonna boop right in the middle. You wanna make sure you get a good bit on each one. So what we're doing over here on the in this pasta dish, I wanna make sure that we don't burn this garlic, but I do wanna brown it. So we're getting pretty close. I know. So right about now on that, so we're going to take a break here. I'm going to take uh, four anchovy fillets and put them in there. Um, again, like, I'm going to take them and kind of rough them up with my hands. So again, this is going to bring the salt to the party. Um, this dish is a little bit more delicate than the meat, obviously. All right. So we're going to let those cook. Pull these off. These are perfect. You guys with anchovies, uh, I know again it's it's possibly a scary, um, scary recipe. You may never use them before. You may not really know what to do with them. You may not know how to be safe with them. Um, the anchovies, especially the ones that have been sitting in the olive oil for, again, a year. I don't know how long they've been in there. They're safe to eat right out of that can. Uh, I wouldn't recommend them. They're extremely salty and and actually extremely fishy right out of the can. So I wouldn't recommend it. But they're safe, so you don't have to worry about. Uh, you don't have to worry about any food sanitary issues or anything like that um, as you're as you're dealing with them. So you can just go straight out of the plate. You know there are there are some recipes out there that call straight from the can uh, right to the top of whatever it is you're eating, just a raw anchovy. Um, again, I don't recommend that. They're extremely fishy and salty. It's very much an acquired taste. I don't have it, um, but just to let you know. We don't have to worry about being sanitary with those. They are sanitary right out of the box or right out of the, uh, the can, if you will. All right, so, oh, I got one more. With these, I just took um, our mushroom mixture, put them right on top of your crostini here. Now, it's a lot of brown on the plate, especially on a brown cutting board. Um, so I'm going to add green and white. So I've got Parmesan cheese. I'm just going to parm them. I have pre-graded from the grocery store. Um, if you have sliced or, you know, a little bit better quality, it's going to go a long way. You can probably put a little bit more on it. Here I'm using it for color. Um, if you, again, if you have more, a fresher one, by all means. Um, all right, so that is cooked out about as far as I want it to. I'm going to throw this pasta in. down a little bit okay so on these and then just hit them with a little bit of green where we got I had parsley um, basil thyme any of that works any of the classic Italian herbs would be perfect for this boom all right so this I made it a non-spicy version because we have some people here that don't want it spicy if you like it spicy Mix in a little bit of a uh, little bit of red pepper flake, which is what I'm doing here. So here I'm putting in about a half a tablespoon of red pepper flake, um, about a tablespoon and a half of drained and rinsed capers. The reason why we went drained and rinsed on these is you're going to get plenty, plenty of salt out of the anchovies. Um, so you don't necessarily need any more salt flavor. You do want that pickle flavor out of them, um, out of the out of the uh, caper here, which is why you put them in there. But you definitely don't need the salt. I'm just going to boil it down or cook it down. I mean, I'm going to add the rest of this butter just to kind of cream it up. This was the softened butter I used for the uh, for the bread. Oh. Mix that together and try to get some of this dirty stuff out so I can plate something for you. You guys, I'm sorry that uh, we had some difficulties today. I hope you enjoyed the recipe. I hope that you um, learned something. I hope you're not afraid to use anchovies if you were before. Uh, I know you're not here to taste this, but I promise you that it's not going to be fishy. It's not going to be overly salty. It's not going to be scary in any, in any shape or form. Um, you know, prior to prior to going to culinary school, the only time I ever had anchovies was on a pizza 
on high school as a dare. I was like, I'll never use them again. Um, but that's that's truly not the way that they need to be cooked. The, use them like this. You're going to get the, the great qualities out of them. So I'm just going to take this, plate it right in the middle. Whoop. guys i know i don't do a super job of telling you everything that goes in these uh i try really hard if you we try to also post them uh as a as a as a post on there you know a recipe card or whatever um we've been trying to work in a recipe card during these recipes uh we're working on that i promise we're going to make it so it's a little bit easier to follow me but i do put everything out there online um i'm rj here at swiss diamond so if you search that you're going to find me um we'll be able to you know I put again. I put all my recipes on there. I also put other recipes online, um, so you'll be able to find those if that's what you're interested. In. All right. So just a little boom, boom. You can do the same thing again. Same meal, right? You serve these at the beginning or as a side. And now you got this. I only made two portions of this, but I could have made six or ten just as easy. Uh, you saw how easy it was to put all that stuff in the pan. Thanks for joining us. We had a lot of fun. Do me a favor. Click that like button. Click the subscribe button. If you haven't hit the bell, make sure you hit that. Comment down below. Stay tuned. Next week, we're going to bring you another great recipe.